everyone. My name is Michelle, an education counsellor from Inti International University and Colleges Malaysia. Inti offers a wide range of programs like business, arts and design, physiotherapy, law, and more. One of our most famous programs will be our 3 plus 0 business program whereby we partner with the University of Hertfordshire, UK. In other words, you will be able to obtain a foreign degree at an affordable cost. If you are interested to study in Inti and would like to find out more but you are unsure how due to the current lockdown situation, don't fret, stay at home and let me help you. Do book an online counselling session with me as per the details seen. Stay home, stay safe and see you online soon. Ladies and gentlemen, this next speaker is someone whom I'm sure all of you will want to meet in real life. And the reason why I say that is because he is probably the most positive person that I have ever met. Yeah. May I introduce to you Mr. Robin Boot, who will be sharing with us on the subject of the power of mindset, finding purpose through passion. Robin is a management consultant in Rotterdam in the Netherlands with a company called Conspec. He also previously served um, BMW. He brings a great degree of experience and expertise into his own ventures, which he's calling personal empowering. He is also a leadership and business coach with Boost the World Foundation. Robin believes in a world where we have people who want to change, make a difference, and take control over their own lives. Let us all drown ourselves in positivity and enthusiasm as I welcome Robin. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Robin Boot, for joining us today. Robin has been a management consultant in the Netherlands for quite a few decades. Um, he has he has worked with the likes of BMW, currently with a company called Conspect. Um, but more importantly, he's also the founder of Personal Empowering. And that is the topic that we'll be covering today. The title of the session is The Power of Mindset, Finding Purpose Through Passion. Thank you. I'm honored and uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Robin. Now, we previously met um, a few months ago on LinkedIn and I was taken away, my, my breath was taken away by your continued positivity and you know even through our communications leading up to this conference, you are probably the most positive, most enthusiastic person that, that I have met so far um, in my life and in my career. So the title of your website and the work that you do, um, your personal brand is about personal empowerment. Can you share with us how you came about to this? Yeah, it's very interesting. It uh, started, uh, let's say, seven years ago, Nigel. Uh, I was watching an, uh, an, uh, a program on the television, uh, National Geographic, and it was about, uh, it was a test. It was about uh, a man uh, trying to get contact in uh, a pub with ladies, and it was about fear. Fear as well, the fear of failure. So he he did a lot of attempts, but uh, they let him down and it was uh, about uh, his brain, how to deal with fear, what does it do with his brain. And yeah, it was very, very uh, fascinating. So I looked that up, how your brain is, is working and uh, I dove into it. And I come to, came to a lot of articles and uh, yeah, let's say gurus and masters like uh, Jim Rohn, Tony Roberts, Andrew Carnegie. Uh, Napoleon Hill and yeah, they were all into this topic about personal uh, development, uh, uh, 
uh, finding your greatness, uh, excellence, and yeah, that kickstarts this process and uh, diving into it. Uh, first of all, it did something with me, within myself, but as well, I thought, okay, this is something to share with uh, more people because it is, it is an interesting topic and uh, to share it with the world. Yes, Robert, you, you mentioned that, you know, we have in today's world so many people out there who call themselves coaches or gurus in self-development. Self-help books are so frequently found across bookstores. But what do you see, Robin, as uh, success in terms of personal empowerment? Or maybe success is not the right word. Maybe we should see it as a journey instead. Mm. Success and a journey. I see it like it is success is a whole spectrum of what do you personally design as is valuable in your life and uh, what is very important. And uh, if you discover and define those elements, I call them anchors, uh, you must make sure that you keep them in a positive uh, state and in uh, a positive score. So for example, Nigel, uh, just for an example, for you it's very important. Uh, your happiness is very important, your health is important, and your finance are important. At least you must make sure that in your life, those three topics, those three anchors are uh, shining. That uh, yeah, you keep them in, in a positive state, keep them uh, positive and do not let them down. Uh, keep working on them. And uh, uh, another thing is as well, if you, for example, have an order in it, uh, really uh, the order is happiness is above finance. At least make sure you make the right decisions and uh, it guides you as a compass uh, in case you must make choices uh, between happiness, hanging out with your family, your friends, and let's say the financial cost that comes to it. So uh, success is keeping the things that you think uh, is important to keep them in a healthy and positive state. That's so true. You mentioned you know, things like finance and health and how these are all interrelated happiness as well. You know, sometimes people tend to compartmentalize these things. The word, the, the phrase uh, growth mindset is also very frequently used these days. And, you know, people use it in conjunction with, you know, you must have a growth mindset in order to be able to make investments and, and increase your wealth. Or you must have a growth mindset so that you will find time to improve your health. Or you must have a growth mindset just for the simple fact of being happy. Otherwise, you're just pessimistic and negative all the time. So with so many different interpretations, um, what do you see as growth mindset? And what do you believe is the, the value of having a growth mindset, uh, especially for today's uh, generation when we're going through such a volatile world? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to start with the opposite, uh, actually, and that is the fixed mindset. Uh, we call it as well uh, to have a reptile brain or a monkey brain. And it is going, this is really going already millions of years uh, back when we uh, were still uh, very primal as a human being. And uh, uh, the, the fixed mindset was, and the reptile brain was only fixated on uh, a few elements. Uh, for example, uh, thirsty, hunger, uh, sexuality, territory, and at least that were the most important things for uh, human beings to conduct. So, first of all, they want to uh, keep that or gain that or not to lose that. And that was the only thing the brain could think of. Can I keep my ter territory? Can I get uh, my food to today? And that is everything. In the, uh, in the passing years, millions of years, uh, we, we developed our brain. Uh, growing into a growth mindset and really open ourselves for other things and elements uh, other than uh, the elements I already named. So you're going to look uh, into, okay, what is more and what, what is more than only hunger? Uh, is it only my family or am I going to expand my territory and the world around me? So uh, if you have a growth mindset, you are open to the world around you. You embrace uh, other things, you embrace change, and uh, you at least always look around you what is more, what is next than uh, the elements I already have. And that is the value. I think it is, is a value because as well, if you open that door, you open possibilities as well. And if you open possibilities, yeah, that is uh, unlimited, uh, Nigel. Definitely. And I think, you know, it's a... Uh very common saying 
that in, in the world today where there are so many challenges, it also means that there are so many possibilities, so many opportunities to overcome these challenges. True. Now, Robin, we, we look at um, the Gen Ys, Gen Zs, um, the younger generations who have been born in the last two decades or so. And, you know, there have been a lot of labels, a lot of nicknames given to these generations. We have the strawberry generation that are easily bruised, the snowflake generation as well. Maybe sometimes unfairly labeled um, the words. Um, but these uh, labels come from the fact that we see more and more people from these generations perhaps lacking in certain skills lacking in resilience, lacking in empathy. Um, so would you agree with these labels? Do you think that um, there is something missing in the mindsets of these younger generations? Well, first of all, uh, you must understand those generations, what is behind. Uh, if you go one level deeper and try to understand the generation and in what kind of world, as you already expressed, Nigel, they, they are living at the moment. Uh, what you can see, for example, is that the, uh, the, the, the youth they have is uh, starting very, very young. And uh, they are teenage angels, for example, already uh, years before you and I let's put it like that, and uh, the environment is still pushing them. They are telling those generations, okay, there is no excuse at the moment. You have everything. The economic is good, and by the age of 30, you must be successful. So it gives a lot of stress to this generation. So uh, they are competitive. They are measuring themselves uh, in ent uh, internet, social media with their uh, generations. And yeah, that uh, again, that can cause a lot of stress and frustration. So uh, based on that one, a lot of these, these younger people are having a burnout or are uh, a little bit dazed or uh, are a little bit lost. And yeah, we as uh, outside world name it or label it, for example, as hey, they are laid back. They are, uh, uh, for example, sitting before the TV again. But yeah, uh, what I, uh, to repeat myself, you must understand what is behind and really look into uh, the mind of those people, the, that generation and what is behind. And maybe very interesting as well, for example, and that is uh, moving forward with, with, with your question. I have a question for you, Nigel. For example, do you know how many days an average person here on earth is living? Do you have any clue? Living in terms of um, <laughs> lifetime uh, age? Lifetime, yes. Yes, lifetime. Um, how many days are we on average on earth? I would say on average... 60? 60 years? Oh, 60 years. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, you are slightly below. It is uh, 68. And if you count that, if you uh, measure that, that is uh, on average, we are here 25,000 days on earth. And you and I know by now, based on experience, it is only going lower. You do not get additional days as a present, for example. And if it is already going down, and if uh, in relation to this question, it is limited amount of days. And I personally think it is a waste in this generation if you, let's say, five days doing nothing. Five days, uh, for example, uh, gaming, or three days, uh, three weeks gaming, or sitting before the uh, TV. If you take into account the days we are here on Earth, are limited. So from that point of view, uh, yes, we must understand the generation, but we must make them aware in their busy mind and, and brain as well that, okay, we are here uh, in a limited uh, amount of time. So while we are here, make something of it. And that is my vision on uh, the generation and yeah, how I look in, uh, into this. That is so true, yes. Robin. And, you know, if I recall one of my other interviews with a, a young girl, her name is Deborah Olatunji, one of our other speakers. She covered, um, you know, transforming the K-12 education system um, on day one of our conference. And one of the things from the book that she had written was this question, you know, if you could have half an hour a day in school, 
where you get to decide each day for that half an hour what you choose to do rather than what the teacher or the curriculum asks you to do you know what would you do with that time and how would you evaluate your project and the success of that project so i think taking that question and perhaps tying it slightly to what you've just said robin if all the younger generations are given an extra half an hour a day or can find half an hour a day from their existing lives, what would you recommend that they spend that time on? Uh, what I would recommend in that half hour, read, first of all, do consciously what you love. Really uh, do what you, where you're interested in, uh, what you love, uh, where you are passionate about. And if you combine it, uh, maybe uh, read or a very good book. Read a book uh, regarding uh, uh, passion, purpose, uh, or whatever, what makes you uh, passionate or what inspires you. Thank you, Robin. That, that's a fantastic suggestion. And I think, you know, people say younger generations nowadays don't read, or that's maybe not entirely true. They don't read physical books, but you know, they, they read on their Kindles or on their tablets and phones. But I think more importantly, what you mentioned there is read or find something to do that you're passionate about. And you know, that, that's something that maybe the younger generations need assistance with in terms of finding that passion. And of course, that is the purpose of our interview today. So in that um, pathway, in that process of finding passion, of course, you know, we have all dealt with our challenges and dealt with failures. Um, how do you deal with failure? And is the, the Edison light bulb model still a good strategy you know, to continuously experiment and experiment until we achieve success? Mm -hmm. Very nice question. How do we, I deal with, with failure? Uh, first of all, I can say everybody, how positive, how you name it as well, Nigel, has a very bad day, can have a very bad day. Everybody can have failure, but uh, yeah, failure is good. Failure teaches you something. Failure gives you the opportunity to set it right. Uh, an example, for example, very famous example, Thomas Edison uh, created and invented the light bulb and he did 10,000 attempts to it to make it happen, to finally do this, uh, this experiment and uh, made it the light bulb. You can say, uh, okay, he failed 10,000 times, but he personally said, okay, uh, I did 10,000 attempts and then it, uh, I pulled it off. And if we are going into the process and, uh, about failure, doing it over and over and over again, I would say fail as fast as possible. Fail as much as possible in order to make it happen. I worked with a very great team, Nigel, uh, and uh, as team building, uh, we did a, a kind of experiment and team building play, and it was called, you can look it up as well, the marshmallow contest. Uh, you must do it with uh, spaghetti. I do not know if you know it, and uh, uh, every group must make a, a structure of spaghetti with uh, not a lot of resources, so maybe only some ropes. And the, the, the aim was to have a, as high a structure as possible with on top the marshmallow. You had three groups, for example, and 15 minutes and everybody started working on it. And what we could discover, and that is uh, uh, tested as well, that everybody is going to build, going to build and uh, let's say 14 minutes. And at the end of the day, they put on the marshmallow and it collapsed because they were thinking, thinking, overthinking, designing. And at the end of the day, they did the final test. And uh, you can compare it, compare it with your life. If you have a kind of goal in your life, it is very, very sorrow for you. If let's say in our example, you are 67 years old and you have to put on the marshmallow or the cherry on your pie do i have a perfect and a meaningful life and then you discover wow this is not what it, what i expected so uh, as well uh, with the marshmallow and the spaghetti do it as fast as possible test it and uh, the the interesting thing is uh, if you look what was the group that was uh, in, in total with the experiment doing best Nigel, and that were children. Children do not think. 
they start doing it. They start doing it, doing it over and over again. And uh, that is really the trick. If you fail, do it as soon as possible, learn from it and do it again. That's so true, Robin. And, you know, I, I am reminded um, this uh, marshmallow spaghetti challenge that you mentioned, you know, we, we have seen it in some of the, the kindergartens or the younger age groups that we work with um, in some of our other projects. Um, I'm also reminded by, you know, as you say, sometimes we overthink the process. You know, there, there's this brilliant um, sort of project called the Yellow Motor Challenge, where it's basically a box and inside the box you're given a few um, random items and you're asked to build um, something which moves, um, you know, like, like a small little toy car. But it is actually impossible to build um, from the items given. But when we see, you know, adults struggling and trying to think, you know, how does this part fix to that part? But as you say, with children, they go straight into the process and it's about having fun. It's about having the creativity. It's about, you know, if it's a collaborative effort, building teamwork, communication skills. And most importantly, it's also about enjoying that process of, I guess, being able to fail and knowing that you will learn from it. Yeah, true, totally true, yes. So our next question, Robin, um, some people say that when it comes to personal empowerment, um, quote unquote, it is all in the mind. And uh, in terms of things like taking initiative or, or kickstarting the process, do you agree with this? And, or if you don't, then how do you think is the best possible ways to start one's journey? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, agreement about it's all in the mind. Uh, it is more doing and uh, you must start doing it. Uh, you must start reading. You must uh, start watching uh, videos, YouTube, uh, TED videos, just uh, take an example at uh, the Hulu, the successful people in life, they all have written uh, biographies and books and start reading, start learning, start to understand them, uh, get into their head and uh, take the steps they have. And from that point of view, uh, behave like them. And you can see uh, if you take uh, this step by step, that it, it will change yourself as well. It, it will change your uh, how, how we talked about your growth mindset. You are going to look into opportunities. I must give one condition as well. Uh, it must be your purpose. It must be your purpose to become successful. It must be your purpose uh, to grow because if that is not the case, then uh, yeah, we have a totally uh, different story, of course. If you are not passionate about uh, why do you want to be the best in, in, in something, of course? And, uh, but what I try to say, uh, it is more over as well, working hard. Really keep doing it, working, trying, testing, and put the hours in. Uh, I, have a, I have several chats uh, with, with entrepreneurs and other people who are saying, okay, uh, for example, exposing on, on social media and, and, and internet and uh, LinkedIn, for example, I did one post and, for example, I used the correct uh, hashtag. I have only, let's say, 150 views and I'm not rich today. I started yesterday and they, what they forget is that you really must work hard on it and do the, do the right things. Do the things uh, that are really designed for it. I worked with a team lately. And uh, we were working on uh, a marketing strategy and we were making uh, personas. So we were looking into the, the head of the customer and we were describe, uh, describing our most desirable customer, for example. So we came out with uh, a Spanish guy, Carlos, and uh, he was uh, running every day. So he was exercising, but still his shape was uh, not athletic, but, but round. So I asked uh, my, my, my team member, and uh, she's a personal coach, and I asked, isn't that strange? He's running every day, but he is still not, uh, let's say, so slim and uh, athletic. And she was saying, yeah, maybe his food pattern was not very well. Hmm. And I was thinking, and I referred to, and I took the parallel in a certain way to my own life. And I asked her because I was very curious. Uh, I'm going to the gym, let's say five, six 
days a week. And I eat in the morning as breakfast, a cracker with cheese in the afternoon, a cracker with cheese. And uh, in this Corona time, for example, I'm not getting uh, very, the, the kilos are not uh, losing very fast. And she was asking me the same, but what are you doing the rest of the day? What are you eating? And she was saying, okay, if you go for it, if you do something, you must do the total package and you must do the right things. And a lot of people are only doing something and think, okay, if I do something, it is a start and then it will be okay, but it is not okay. Again, you must work hard doing not the things right, but you must do the right things to go and go after your goal. I mean, taking from, from what you've just said, uh... You know, we have a lot of people who read books, they, they watch these videos, they get a lot of sources of inspiration. And then, you know, at, at some point in time, maybe after a few months, after a few years, you know, the, the resilience breaks down and, and they end up saying, you know, maybe I just uh, am not talented, I am not born with this talent, or maybe this is something that requires X amount of money and I just don't have that money. What, what advice would you give to these people, you know, who are maybe going through a journey and they feel like giving up? Um, how would you advise them in terms of the sustainability of that journey? My advice will be have hope, have faith and have determination, have focus and truly believe if this is your passion and if this is your purpose, then hang on, hang on. And yeah, it will pay off anyway. And at the end of the day, you will reach your goal. But do not think that you're not good enough. Do not think it's not paying off, but have that clear goal, have that clear uh, vision uh, ahead of you. And uh, again, uh, keep believing in yourself. Keep believing and have the focus on your dot on the horizon. Thank you, very, very sound advice. Um, I, I quote from, from what you've just said, you use the word, um, have clear goals and, you know, tying in as well with having, having a sort of, you know, organizations have a vision and mission, you know, why, why shouldn't individuals have a mi vision and mission? You know, what, what is our purpose in life? Mm -hmm. And if I tie that to my next question, you know, we are going through a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain complex and ambiguous world um, where the world is so rapidly evolving all the time. Do you think that when it comes to our purpose, we should also be evolving and, you know, we, we are also becoming like all these different products with a, a warranty period and an expiry date that, you know, we have to also keep adapting and changing um, based on the situation around us? Yeah, that's true. And the, the, the thing is, and I'm coming back on one of my, uh, I call it conditions or prerequisites. Uh, if your purpose, for example, and you discover that your mission and really where you're passionate about is not about, for example, uh, getting better, uh, getting a better job, uh, becoming a CEO of have uh, major goals in that point. If you have discovered and learned, for example, that your happiness is within your family and your kids. Uh, I, first of all, that is what I, what I am saying. Why should you change? And that is very important. And uh, what I think is uh, you live the life that you designed on your terms and not based on uh, the measurement or let's say what other people are saying. So if you think it is very, not very important and you, you live, for example, the life that you desire and where you're happy uh, with, with your car, with your wife, uh, that's okay. But uh, something different and that's the opposite. If you look, for example, Nigel, how many or the percentage of people are that not are uh, the percentage of people that are not doing what they really want, that they have an other desire or passion, but they settle uh, for less. That's 80% at the moment. So on this, in this world, on this globe, 80% of the people are not doing what they actually want to do. And then we have a totally different uh, picture. And if you are looking into the stats, uh, for example, 90% of the people here on this earth 
uh, are doing something different than uh, as they desired and dreamed of as they were a kid. So as a kid, they dreamed that really they want to be a doctor, an astronaut, or want to climb the Kilimanjaro. But now at this moment, yeah, they left and run away from their, from their dream as being a kid. And the most important and shocking is, if we are looking to stats, as, as I mentioned, 99% of the people among us have still, when their life is over, unfinished and undesired wishes. So they always said, okay, I want to go to uh, Australia. I want to go fishing there. And that is my greatest desire, my dream. I do not want to do anything more than that. And then suddenly, unexpected or expected, life is over. And they thought, hmm, what about that? And if that is the case, then I think uh, if you still then in the same job, in the still situation, then I think, okay, you must kickstart. You must not lose and forget about your dreams. But if it is really a desire of you, go for it. I think if I may summarize what you've just mentioned, you know, we, we need to have life principles, which I think a lot of people do. But more importantly, we need to stick very strongly to those, those life principles. And, you know, you mentioned some examples, climbing um, Mount Kilimanjaro, going fishing um, in Australia. You know, I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of our audience members have a personal, what we call a bucket list. But it's, it's, it's like people who say they want to quit smoking and they never end up doing it. You know, it, it's very useful having a bucket list, but there's no point having it if you never tick off the items in the list. So hence the, the importance of sticking strongly to these principles and I guess taking action, as you've said, you know, not just writing things down or, or having ideas, but actually taking active steps and doing things to achieve those goals. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Otherwise, and of course, it, and I'm very happy that everybody is very personal and everybody has uh, different goals and objectives. Otherwise, it will be very crowded on the Kilimanjaro or fishing in Australia, for example. But uh, yeah, that is true. And if you do not take the action, then still, yeah, what do you have then left? You have a, a dream, then you are a dreamer or you have a, a, a desire or you have something you want. But if you do not take the action, then it is only yeah, wishing for it. Yes, Robin. Um, you know, we, we talk about bucket lists and of course we have very different examples of, of what everybody wishes to do in their lives. And therefore we also look at how we are also personalized. We are, we are all very different and unique individuals in this world. From that point of view, um, you know, we have all these things like personality tests or career aptitude tests, all these different models and, and analytics that people use to measure, whether it's for entrance into university, whether it's measuring whether you are successful for a job application. I mean, surely all this goes against, you know, if I want to apply for a job and I have to answer these questions, but if I answer it in a certain way, it goes against those life principles that we've just mentioned. You know, surely this is putting what we call square pegs in round holes and that we know that further down the line that relationship will just not work out. I mean, what are your thoughts on this and how do you think our life experiences with, with the organizations or the people around us can become more personalized? Well, I do agree with the personality test. The, of course, uh, we have uh, a lot of people on, on, on this globe and there are patterns. There are certain uh, times, uh, types of patterns and certain uh, types of per, uh, personalities. But uh, especially uh, uh, how you call them, the square pigs, for example, in a certain way, uh, I like them. I love them in a certain way. And why? I can explain why. Because, like I said, they live the life they want on their terms and they do not look around and okay what is everybody thinking of me but they have their authenticity and uh, yeah they live it like they want it and uh, yeah it is 
it is, for example, as well, the, uh, the, the motto that you will recognize. And I saw it in, in your uh, promo video as well. Uh, at the end of the day, it are the crazy people. It are, are the crazy ones who think we can change the world, eventually who are changing the world. And uh, yes, uh, that are uh, square pegs. And that is not uh, mainly the people who are uh, fitting into the pattern and listening to what their environment is telling to them. And uh, I mentioned authenticity as well. And I think it is very important, whatever you do, to stay close to yourself. Uh, uh, a, a little example in relation to this, uh, and that is leadership. I had uh, two years ago, I had uh, a leadership training. And there I had really the honor to, uh, to have uh, Barack Obama there as well. And he was talking about authenticity as well. And uh, the, the thing is, and I can still see him sitting in front of me, and he was telling, at the end of the day, my last thought here on earth, for example, is not about how we deal with the financial crisis, how we de dealt with a foreigner affair. But at the end of the day, my last thought is going, walking in the path hand in hand with my daughters, Malia and Sasha, and that is what is truly matter. And that is authenticity, not thinking about what our, uh, other people uh, are thinking, uh, not thinking about, okay, I'm vulnerable, but okay, come into the people's heart and uh, be yourself. And I think that is uh, very important as well. And talking about authenticity, Simon Sinek, for example, had uh, one statement and he was, okay, if we are going back to our uh, very youngest experience in our life, what are we thinking that? What is that experience, our first thought in our life? And somehow, because we remember that one, it's connected as we do today. And what I, can, what I took out of it and what I can tell is uh, I can really go back when I was uh, three years old, three years old, I was sitting in a sandbag and uh, I was really alone. And I was playing for, uh, with uh, a plastic cup of uh, vanilla yogurt and there was a crack in it. And somehow my little finger, three years old, was stuck into that crack. And I was really, really very terrified because I couldn't get out of it. And uh, I can still recall that my, my grandpa was coming out of the house and he released me out of the, uh, the plastic cup. And I was so, so freed and I was so happy and if I reflect that today maybe that's why I think it's very important for me as a, a person today that uh, if there is a possibility to, to, to help people to give them some inspiration or motivation give them a pat of the back, uh, on their back to, uh, to move forward and to, uh, to be there yeah, that maybe that is the connection what Simon was thinking of who were you in your earliest memory and what are you today? That's such an interesting question. You know, we, we always say children have the most innocent minds. Um, they are not, uh, if I may use the word, corrupted by, you know, all the influences around us. We have peer pressure. We have things like harassment and internet bullying. These um, influences that are coming from, you know, um, media like you know movies and so on and i think you know the, the word that you have used a few times in your response is authenticity the the importance of living our lives based on those life principles our purpose rather than having this purpose having our individual vision and mission being dictated by all these influences around us you know why why should we cater to you know, for example, the, the social media industry and, and trying to have a, a million or several million likes and followers, um, if that's not what makes us happy. I mean, I understand some people may do that for a living. Some people gain a lot of happiness from doing that sort of thing. But that doesn't mean that all of us should just follow along. Totally true and agree with you, Nigel. So I think when, when we look at, you know, this topic of personal empowerment, um, 
if I may now sort of expand that, um, and let's see how personal empowerment can also empower those around us. Um, you know, because we want this process to be sustainable, as you say, the process of helping others, even giving someone a pat on the back. So how important it is and how can we ensure that our passion and our purpose acts to serve those around us? Uh, a few months ago, I uh, met and caught up with uh, Patrick Dijkstra. Uh, Patrick Dijkstra, an uh, Emmy-nominated and uh, award-winning filmmaker, uh, an, expedition, an adventurer, expedition leader, and uh, he was born and raised in Denver. And uh, from the earliest moments, he already uh, was very free in nature. He liked to be outside and uh, uh, hanging out in the nature. When he was 17, he uh, was in an exp expedition and he saw a very massive, uh, in a museum, a very blue whale, life-size. And that made so much impression for him that, I could, that he could never uh, lose that moment uh, in his head from that moment in time. Uh, at the same time, he was studying, he was cum laude uh, uh, degreed, uh, he has a cum laude degreed in uh, communications in Florida. He uh, did law and he was a successful lawyer on, on Wall Street. But at the same time, he could never let go that moment of that blue well. And that was really in uh, the, the early days. And he was all, uh, always connected with it. So he searched on internet, but yeah, uh, internet 20, 30 years ago, that was very uh, primitive, uh, as, as you can imagine, 20 years ago. So from that moment in time, uh, he was uh, working uh, on Wall Street on uh, Forbes 500 companies. And at the same time, in his free time, he was expediting and searching for the blue whale. Till the moment that uh, in 2001, he found in the co uh, at the coast of Sri Lanka, the blue whale. That was his first encounter with this blue whale. And that moment, want, uh, because he followed his passion and, and his interest, this, that was so enlightening for him, not for himself, because it was a, a personal milestone and victory, but it gave him the feeling as well that that moment he must educate it and show that to the world and have other people uh, enjoying that moment. And at the same time, he thought, maybe I can educate them and uh, go better with their uh, pollution and their trash in, in, in the nature. So he combined his passion and uh, he saw that he could uh, educate it. And as well, uh, he kept filming and uh, the BBC got track on him because yeah, it, were, it is really uh, amazing movies that he made and the BBC offered him uh, a, a job. So from that point of view, he uh, let go and left uh, his profession as a lawyer at Wall Street. And yeah, he really went for his passion, going into the nature. And there you can really see that uh, uh, really uh, personal and genuine passion, not seeing it as a career, can really lead to something big and your really purpose in life and a mission. And from that moment in time, he had a mission. He was a man with a mission and uh, learning the people about nature, the blue whales and uh, how to deal with the, the, the planet. And yeah, there you can really see that uh, from uh, your, your fir very first interest and passion, and you are excited about something that you really can grow it and really can share it with the world. And that is really interesting and fascinating. But as well, Nigel, we are always talking about purpose, pleasure, and passion. But as well, there is another side as well. And that's pain. As well, a few months ago, I, I, I met with a lady, uh, Jamie. She was really in a very bad state, in, uh, in a very bad mental state. She was already years into the dark and uh, anxious, very fearsome, everything was overwhelming. And she was really living in the valleys of, of this world at the moment, really didn't see any perspective. And uh, I hang out with her, had some chats with her and slowly she was talking about, okay, I like to grow my plants and I like to have affirmations in my house, at least to have something to, to have a, a certain light, life and perspective because at this moment my path is so dark. And we, we kept talking and 
uh, suddenly she, she went back to her youth and uh, when she was happy and where she smiled. And then in that moment she, she said, okay, that feels really fantabilistic. That's a, f a very funny word. I made it up with my, with my friends. It is a, a kind of mixture of uh, fabulous, fantastic and fantastic. But yeah, I do not have a uh, the pattern to it, and, uh, but it is really funny. Maybe I should have. And that was really, I was thinking, okay, maybe we can do something with it. So uh, I called with uh, a very loyal friend and I said, okay, uh, can we buy that domain and what, uh, who has it and what did it cost? And I, I'm going to the bottom of it, uh, but at the end of the day, we got the domain and I really hold in my hand, okay, dear Jamie, from now on, really, you can be the owner and founder of Fantabilistic. And this is really making you, you happy, strong. And it is really a symbol for you that uh, this is uh, something of, of fate, hope, and de determination. And she says, yes, if I can pull this off, I can help people. I can help the world and similar people like I, I can be the, 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 the resort for them. So what you can see, she was really flourishing up by that perspective somewhere from out of the dark and she, she turned their pain her pain into something positive and now she is really yeah pulling this off and being a, a kind of beacon for the world so it is not always that it is only passion that leads to purpose but it can be pain as well such great examples robin and um if i Take from the first one, the, the example of the gentleman and the blue whale. You know, it, it's all about, uh, I guess, design thinking as well. You know, looking into how we can help those around us, how we can improve the world around us. And from there, you know, taking that and also using it, using it as a model to work on what we are passionate on. And if I take the second example of Jamie, I think, you know, we are not mental health experts here, but I think it's always important to have something that we cling on to, whether it's, you know, as with yourself, a memory from your, your very youngest days, whether it's like Jamie, uh, a word that she created with her friends. You know, the, these are things which at some point in time when we are in those valleys that you mentioned, that these are the things that help us to kickstart the journey that help us to find the right pathways again. True, totally true. So Robin, with the advancement of technology, you know, we are looking at now things like AI and machine learning, you know, the industrial revolution 4.0 is the buzzword that everyone is using. Digital transformation is another <laughs> phrase that everybody is using. Uh, so, what, what do you see um, for us human beings in terms of our future? Do you think that we are, it is going to be more difficult, the process of personal empowerment? Um, do you think we are slowly losing what we call the human touch? And perhaps from there also, maybe you'd like to share how you envision your own future. Okay, that's very, very interesting. It's a very fascinating topic because uh, from the early days and in my personal journey, in my personal yeah, developing and empowerment, I was all, uh, always searching for a way to extend my brain, to explain my capacity, just to, to learn more, to, to, to put more in my head, to have more abilities. And uh, with this new technology, the new tools, the EI, for example, it gives maybe in the future a, a, a very good possibility. As well, what I can say, I did a, a research and I asked people uh, based on some inspiration uh, of a book I read. And that was really, if the, the most beautiful poem that you have ever read, you discover that it is made by, uh, by artificial intelligence, by a computer, that uh, is combining the, the most emotional and touching words, uh, words, combining them and create a poem, do you really feel different about it then? And it's very interesting because 60% of our, the people, the humans thought, okay, then it is different, then it is not detachable, then it is only a machine. And 40%, uh, okay, it can uh, enrich our lives. So it is very interesting and, uh, and the romanticist in myself in me is then I see a future 
and that is really if we are going that far with the with the machine and uh, the technology how amazing would it be if a robot for example is really crying because what he has produced that we turn it around not that we get more machinery machine like but that the machines are getting more human what about that sounds like straight out from the hollywood movies robin <laughs> <laughs> No, but that is very true. You know, um, technology, including AI, is only as good as we humans develop it to be. And I, I think, you know, with so many machines and so much automation around us, we will eventually reach a stage where we don't want to see them as just machines. We don't want to see these things as just helping our lives become more efficient. You know, we, we want these things to also, I mean, if you can do it more efficiently for me, but at the same time also, you know, do it in such a way that I feel happy, that's an added bonus. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. So just to close on that um, topic of uh, the future and technology, what are your thoughts? What are some predictions that you have in terms of what I call um merging the organic and the artificial um, in how we view and how we grow our personal mindsets. Yeah, it already started, of course, because if we are looking around us, uh, uh, information and uh, influences are uh, these days very quickly. So where we, are, where we were, for example, in uh, 10 years, 20 years ago, that information, books, I already say books, but you are already saying movies or something like that. But, but information is getting very fast and a development is going very fast. So I can imagine that in a moment of time, but yeah, I do not want to go to dive into already, the, like you said, the Hollywood scene and development. But I can imagine that there comes a moment in time that we are really able to program our minds in certain, to certain conditions and to, to not to learn certain abilities, but to acquire certain abilities that really we have a kind of pattern information already somewhere inside. And it doesn't take, for example, 10,000 10, hours and reading books to get a certain capability or ability, but that is really in a click of a second or let's say a couple of days that you are really trained to, to, to the basics and you really understand a kind of pattern of ability uh, to develop yourself. And there are really going different and new ways on, okay, uh, what is development, in which ways is development best, for example. So we are constantly, the world is constantly changing, developing and evolving. And uh, the, the thing is, we must adapt to that and uh, rapidly. Definitely, adaptability and um, you know, flexibility, um, all very important in, in today's world. So finally, Robin, some uh, concluding questions. So you know, we, we've had a fairly long conversation. If the audience members were to get some key takeaway messages, you know, wh what can I now, after listening to this interview with Robin, what can I put into action immediately? You know, I want to kickstart my journey. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, let's, uh, let's dive with that, uh, into that one and summarize. Very first one is really find your passion or let's say your pain. You really must have your purpose, your purpose, your mission, uh, not only what you said for the organization, from, but from a person as well. What is driving me and why am I here on earth? What is really my mission being here and what I, have I tried to accomplish? Uh, another thing is envision the dot on the horizon. Where do you want to be? Where really you want to be, let's say, in 10, 20 years and really write it down. What are your goals? Really specify it uh, detailedly. Okay, and then you can say where I am, I am today and where am I want to go? That is your journey. Uh, describe as well and uh, again put everything on, on paper describe your values what do you think important in your journey going from a to b is it what i said is it uh, money is it happiness is it uh, uh, your health for example and so far it is only 
let's call it a very high level and fuzzy wuzzy maybe for some of you but as well what you what you said you must put it in action otherwise it will be always a dream a, a desire or a want so take in your head what is your required next step what action do i need to take and you can do that both both ways you can uh, start today and what is the next step or you can really envision your endpoint and uh, take it up from there going slightly back so put it into action and from time to time keep reflecting keep reflecting and not think okay in my head i want to have a bmw m8 for example in 20 years and then you start working on you make the money and uh, a year before that you want to buy the uh, the, the m8 and for example uh, and you wanted to have a combustion engine and there is only electrical vehicle so and that is the marshmallow on the spaghetti you must keep reflecting testing is it still relevant is it still reasonable and yeah, keep communicating, for example, to your environment. Uh, I can't imagine that you uh, have to align with your family, with your wife, if you want to buy uh, in 20 years a BMW M8, for example. And uh, again, what I said, uh, uh, it is, uh, I said BMW, it can be the Kilimanjaro as well. It can be the, the, the uh, Tokyo Marathon. It can be fishing, but whatever you want, where you're passionate about, uh, envision it and make it happen. Have that, uh, what I already said, have that hope, have that faith and that determination. Uh, yeah, committed to that goal. That's a great summary, Robin, of our conversation. And to our audience members, you know, take the opportunity to use our conference app, or I should say our uh, Inspired Community app, at space where you can record selfie videos of yourself of up to three minutes. Share with us, share with Robin, you know, what are what are the values that drive your purpose in life? Um, you know, what are some of the ambitions that you have and the actions that you will put into place now that you have been inspired by this interview? So last but not least, Robin, how do you see yourself um, innovating and uh, provoking mindset change in this area of expertise, um, in personal empowerment within the next 12 months? especially given you know the the, the post pandemic situation and also robin you know a, a hidden question for you um which i've always wanted to ask you all, all this time since i met you now, what's your secret to staying so positive all the time okay let's start with the first one how do i see myself in uh, in this area of expertise in 12 months yeah, what I already said, uh, fantabilistic. I know we uh, we have some work to do. There's a lot of work to do with fantabilistic and Jamie, but at least I know and I promise when we're pulling this off, when she's pulling this off, helping the world, uh, yeah, uh, my dedication and promises, I will be next to her uh, doing it together with her. So that is already one topic uh, that I have in mind in the, the next 12 months. And as well, with another organization I am connected with, uh, Boost the World, that is an organization uh, as well, already aligning with Wright and with Ellaberry at the moment uh, regarding education, having a purpose and a goal to, to raise 1,111 villages and uh, raise young leaders. Yeah, we are going with that program uh, globally. We're scaling up at the moment, so in the 12th, uh, next 12 months, uh, yeah, I will be involved in that one as well, just uh, in this area of expertise. It isn't uh, much more, there is not much, uh, it's very humble to, yeah, to raise the next generation into uh, this awareness and raising young leaders. The last one you asked, positivity. Yeah, very, very important, Nigel, and you are smiling as well. And that it, then I already have it's my purpose because you are smiling. But yeah, uh, it is be grateful, uh, be thankful, uh, embrace life, be open. Very important as well. What I already said in this, this interview, be the person you want to be, uh, do the things you love and everything what you do, what you do is do it with passion. And last of, but not least, enjoy the ride and just keep smiling. So there we have it. Once again, um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you. Um, 
Robin Booth, founder of Personal Empowering. Um, to our audience members, feel free to use the community app or all our other different channels, submit your questions, your comments. Uh, we will collect them after the conference. We will send them to Robin. His feedback will be published in our post-conference email newsletters. And of course, uh, the endeavors that Robin has mentioned, if you'd like to get in touch with him personally, if you want him to be your um, positivity coach, we will have the details um, below this video. So once again, thank you so much, Robin, for your time. It's been an absolute joy. My pleasure, Nigel. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And it is a pleasure and an honor for me as well. Thank you.